Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this video, we're gonna be talking about some very strong thunderstorms. They're gonna be moving through the Southeast today. And then next week, we've got colder temperatures coming back for the Pacific Northwest with a diving trough that's gonna set the stage for a multi-day severe weather outbreak next week. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Here is the preliminary uh, storm reports from yesterday. We had four or five tornadoes already confirmed up here in northwest of Dallas in Verdon. I know they had several uh, tornadoes at, itself. Had numerous reports of uh, large hail in and around uh, the same areas in the in the, the northwest. They had some large hail in and around the Dallas Fort Worth area as well. And then even down here in the central Texas. And that just extended into uh, Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama throughout the day. And these are preliminary reports. So they'll be adding to these as these very strong thunderstorms will continue uh, moving off uh, to the east. Here's the setup uh, this morning. They've already had several confirmed tornadoes down here. This is your severe thunderstorm watch in, in uh, green, as well as over here. There's a, a, a tornado watch happening right now through 3 o'clock for southern portions of uh, Alabama and to south southeastern portions of Georgia. And then as I'm doing this video, they have already updated the extended tornado watch down here in southeastern Georgia or until 6 o'clock as we've got some very strong uh, thunderstorms tornadic thunderstorms and large hail thunderstorms uh, moving across to the east, racing across at 40, uh, 40 miles an hour here. You can see the verdicts here, uh, up to one and a half inch hail, up to 70, 70 mile per hour winds, and it's moving east at 35 uh, miles an hour. So let's go over the parameters. Here's the latest outlook as the newest update at the 8 a.m. advisory from the Storm Prediction Center. Yeah, we're, we've got those severe thunderstorm watches and the tornado watches. That's where they have the enhanced risk in parts of uh, Montgomery, Alabama, going into Columbus and uh, Tallahassee, Florida, Santa Fe, Georgia. You're going to be under the gun for those stronger supercell uh, thunderstorms uh, that's happening now. And that will just continue moving across uh, through uh, this afternoon, getting into tonight. Uh, parts of uh, Jacksonville, getting into Birmingham, Mobile, Alabama, you're going to see a threat as well. So all these areas, you're going to be need to keep, stay weather aware uh, for uh, activity uh, later on today as these strong thunderstorms will definitely move across. And it's a wind threat too, and a hell threat. So this is, and typically what they, this is a hatch, what they call hatched risk. So within this zone, you have a like a 10% chance of seeing large hail of two inch or, or down diameter or higher. So that's typically golf ball size hair, hail or greater within this sector of uh, M Montgomery, Alabama, going into Mobile uh, and, and definitely parts of uh, Auburn, Alabama. This area is gonna be under the gun for that large hail, uh, unfortunately, and as well as the stronger wind. So this is a very uh, intense system that's moving across uh, down here into the, into the southeast uh, today. And you're going to have to be having your NOAA weather weather radios handy uh, to get all your alerts because, yeah, we've got a tornado uh, action too because that's where that tornado watch is actually located right now. And some of these could be uh, bigger tornadoes, possibly in that hatched risk area, a 10% chance of seeing an EF2 uh, tornado today uh, within this area of Albany, Georgia, Georgia, of Valdosa, Georgia, getting into Thomasville. This area right here down in the south, south, southeastern parts of Georgia, you're going to have to be extra careful of uh, those tornadic uh, thunderstorms later on today, As and they've already extended that tornado watch until uh, 6 o'clock. So, yeah, here's the latest uh, high-resolution model as this will continue moving across. This is by noontime as these race across to the, south, to the southeast at 35 miles an hour, bringing those heavier bands and showers and thunderstorms uh, to this area down here in the southeastern parts of Georgia, Atlanta, southward. And that will get into the Carolinas and going into North Carolina as we go into later on this afternoon. And that tailing band on the south side will sink down into parts of southeastern Georgia. That will eventually get into uh, Florida Panhandle and dive southward throughout the day, throughout the overnight into uh, south uh, Florida. And as you can see, that low will traverse up 
up on in the northeast coast and by that time these won't be severe these will just be some heavier gustier winds uh, heavier rains extending along the uh, i-95 corridor here up here in portions of uh, the northeast but you can look out west here we've got that snow i mean you gotta have some cold air around left and we're yeah we're still talking snow this late in the game at the end of april and we've got some rain coming back into uh, california so here's the setup we've been talking about this southern oscillation index for a while and this continues the trend noticeable the notice the 90-day trend i mean back in january it was a positive 15 so typically if you have over eight that's typically uh, a la nina which we've had been in and you, if you have a, a negative eight uh, that's that's typically implies a uh, el nino well the trend has been predominantly going towards an enzo neutral so you can see the trend down to 11 in february negative in march so in the 90-day trend has already dropped down to about a four so here's your enzo outlook where we've had that stronger la nina and then we've just been climbing upward as we've been ge getting deeper into uh, april and now that we're transitioning into may we're heading towards uh an enzo neutral and what that basically signifies is yeah the, that southern oscillation you know uh, trough that's down here to the south that will c remain active for the foreseeable future and now that we're going into the you know the wettest time frame of the year as these as these systems come down it'll have ample amount of moisture to work with down in the south and southeast and i think that's just going to add insult to injury and fuel uh these thunderstorms as they uh, come they, they come across so here's the setup i mean well let me just take you back i mean we had that uh sudden major sudden stratospheric warming event back in january 4th it took about a month to get all that colder air uh, down to the surface and that's when we had that huge february arctic outbreak that brought all those record cold temperatures all the way down to the deep south and then now we're going through what they call a final warming period of the polar vortex and you saw the first instance of that where those record cold temperatures uh, came all the way back down to texas again it hits you know numerous record lows around the southeast and portions of the east so i think we've maxed out but we're going to see impulses of colder air still for the next several weeks and as we warm up and as that moisture taps into that colder air coming down from the north these anomalies are going to have that clash and that's going to set the stage and keep the severe weather threat alive and i think it's going to be coming a, 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 a lot more active uh, over the next several weeks so here's your anomalies by tuesday uh, the 27th you can see a developing trough digs in bringing all those colder temperatures back into the pacific northwest out ahead of it you got that warm surge well above average temperatures and look to the north yeah we've got more colder air coming down the pipe towards the end of may as we go into may 3rd we'll have these subsequent periods of we have four or five day warm-up period and then we'll have cold shots coming down from the north here is by the third may third yeah let I me mean, look at that still 20 degrees below normal anomalies coming back into the central uh, u.s even down further than that and it's still yeah that's going to be clashing with those temperatures down to the south and that's going to keep the severe weather threat alive and it's a very active period down here for portions of the south and the southeast if we just extend the view until the fifth yeah i mean yeah that trough just keeps digging down so we're going to see impulses of colder temperatures clashing with those warmer temperatures as we go into the first portions of may yeah these below normal anomalies are 30 degrees below average and you can see well above average down here this you know up here in the pacific northwest where we just have those kind of extreme uh, temperature gradient and that just continues you can see by the eighth we warm up again for the south and look to the north we got more colder air trying to enter back into the picture to have that clash again so i do expect a very active time so let's take you back for the setup that's going to happen that's going to be happening tomorrow uh sunday april uh, the 25th you can definitely see the warm surge out ahead of it uh, we have all those record cold temperatures that that system that's in the southeast today will continue pushing across and then we'll have ample amount of time to start warming back up for the south 
you can see these well above average temperatures start to creep back into Texas and a diving trough coming back into in the Pacific Northwest. That's going to bring some rain back into the picture into Washington and uh, Oregon here back into the north, uh, north, uh, por northern portions of the Carolina and some much colder air. But look to the north here. That's the ridge. That's the blocking pattern that's going to set up for next week. And that typically slows down the system. So as this trough digs in, we have blocking to the north. And this will, this will slow down the systems and keep the severe weather threat alive. So I do feel like this is going to be taking a multi-day event as this comes through you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let me show you the 500 millibar by Tuesday. Yeah, that's that we could be setting the stage. I mean, look at that temperature gradient. We've got well above average temperatures out ahead of it, well below average temperatures back behind it. And where that clash zone is and that dry line is, I do expect uh, uh, thunderstorms to start to erupt off the dry line in uh, West Texas as we go into the day, on a, especially into Tuesday evening. Here's by Thursday. You can see it really doesn't go anywhere with this blocking still remains in fact. So we could be looking at a long duration event with the ridge building back into uh, you know, California. Look at the trough. I mean, look at the jet stream coming all the way down to the south. So this is the dynamic setup with some very warm temperatures out east, very warm temperatures back out west. You got that trough dot dig digging down in the middle. And you got that west-based NAO blocking pattern that just, just uh, slows down the system and increases the severe threat and increases the flooding threat in these areas. So I'm looking at a long duration event for next week. Here's Friday the 30th. Yeah, you can definitely see the jet stream buckling right here and digging down that trough. It just continues moving across into the southeast, getting into portions of the east uh, by then. And here's the, the surface map going into Tuesday. Yeah, no question. Cold air back behind it, where that, where that trough is gonna fall. And where if you got moisture mixed it in, yeah, we're talking more snow for Colorado and even places and portions of Denver. It's not out of the question. You could see more snow fly. And in fact, Denver, you've already received 80.2 inches of snow. That's your snowiest season in 37 years back in 1983-84 so that's been just incredible as this pattern just continues and doesn't seem to let up uh even going into uh portions of may so yeah there's no question the storm prediction center has already highlighted a, that severe threat with that temperature gradient that's going to be set up for next week they pushed it back because that west-based nao that's going to be slowing down this system so now the setup is more likely in West Texas is going to be extended, but this is just going to continue moving across as we go into Wednesday, as we go into Thursday, as we go into Friday uh, next week with a very active pattern. Here's your setup by Wednesday on the surface map by the 28th. Yeah, you can see the darker greens here setting up some very heavy rain because the slowing aspects of this system setting up into portions of the Dallas Worth area, going into Oklahoma, portions of Arkansas, getting into Missouri, maybe getting into Illinois and, and Indiana. With that warmer surge, uh, we're gonna be able to tap into that severe aspect a little bit further north than what we've seen as of late. So I do feel even areas up here in the Ohio Valley are gonna be under the gun for a severe threat by next week as that trough really starts to dig in by Friday, we'd be, be looking at a long linear threat of supercell you know, wave of energy coming across by, by the time we get into Friday, by, you know, by the end of the next week. So I'm definitely looking at a very active time frame, especially for those middle four days. Here's your setup for the precipitation. You got that trough digging down in to uh, the Pacific Northwest, bringing back the moisture back into the West Coast, back into California, back into Southern California. We've got that developing Enzo neutral pattern, maybe increasing a little bit more rain, bringing back for the desert Southwest. That's where you need it the most, but where it's gonna be able to tap into that energy from the Gulf. And man, it, as that blocking sets up, you could be looking at torrential rains and multi-day setup of flooding rains, six to eight inches in this corridor right here as it slows down, as it moves across and goes into the southeast and then extends 
all the way into the Ohio Valley, getting into the mid-Atlantic states with some very heavy rain and probably uh, supercell thunderstorms uh, by then as well. But back behind it, you still got the snow aspect as well as the colder temperatures will be out here in the Pacific Northwest. And that's going to bring some, that snow back in the picture into uh, the higher elevations of uh, Idaho, Montana. And like I mentioned, this will get into the four quarter states as well as uh, Colorado again with more heavy snow as we as we go throughout uh, next week. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.